Today I'm going to show you something that I taught Pino Palladino back in the 80s when he was my student. So with that said, grab your bass and let's get started. I started teaching Pino back in the early 80s. It could have been the end of 1981 or the beginning of 82. In fact, Pino was my very first student. At his first lesson, I had asked him to prepare something for me, so he decided to play through a transcription that he did by ear of an Anthony Jackson bass line and solo from a tune called Fantasia off a Harvey Mason record. He executed the transcription very well, but he said that he didn't understand how the lines worked over the chords. He wanted to be able to copy something by ear and then understand how to apply the content that he was learning to other tunes as well as being able to know how to transpose those specific ideas to different chord types. In the 80s, chord scales was a big topic of study, so that's where we got started. Chord scales is an interesting subject because in its basic form, a chord scale is a scale that contains the root 3, 5, and 7 of the chord you're playing over. One of the mini drills that I showed Pino was a concept that I first came across while studying at the Berklee College of Music called interconnecting scales. This is a useful concept that can be applied to any chord progression by moving from one chord to the next, connecting their corresponding chord scales by either a half step or a whole step. I'm going to demonstrate this concept over two unrelated chords, C minor 7 and F sharp minor 7. The Dorian mode is a good chord scale to apply over the minor 7th chord because it contains all the chord tones, the root, flat 3, 5, flat 7, as well as all the available chord tensions, which include 9, 11, and 13. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got in this line. We're starting off with C minor 7 with the line root 2, flat 3, 4. Then I'm transitioning to the F sharp minor 7 by a half step, playing the same line, root 2, flat 3, 4. Then into the C minor 7, playing the same line, root 2, flat 3, 4. Then I'm going to shift up to the F sharp minor 7, playing root 2, flat 3, 4. Transitioning into the C minor 7 by playing root flat 7, 6, 5. Transitioning into the F sharp minor 7 by playing 2 root flat 7. Then moving by half step into the C minor 7 where I'm playing flat 3, 2, root flat 7 into the F sharp minor 7 where I'm playing flat 3, 2, root, flat 7. I'm now shifting back down to the C minor 7 playing the flat 3, 2, root, flat 7. And then into the F sharp minor 7 where I'm playing the flat 3, 2, flat 3, 4. This brings me back to the root 2, 3, 4 in this position with the C minor 7 and then I've got the root 2, flat 3, 4 on the F sharp minor 7 root 2, flat 3, 4 on the C minor 7 and then root flat 7, 6, 5 on the F sharp minor 7 and then resolving back to the root on the C Minor seven. So notice how I start playing this ascending line. I come to an appropriate transition point and start to bring it back down the fretboard. Now what I'm going to do is continue that process by bringing it back up again. And then back down to my resolution point. Okay, now you go try it. What's really cool about this concept is that we can take it beyond the initial point of application and use that C minor 7 to F sharp minor 7 structure to play over a C7 altered chord. <laughs> Remember
remember that interconnecting scales is just a drill that helps you to familiarize yourself with the fingerboard. Once you start to get comfortable with that, you can start to add and build things on top of that using different concepts to create your own personal expression. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and in return you're going to get all my latest bass tips, techniques, and lessons every Thursday. Until next time, review this series of lessons right here for your homework next week. And don't forget, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively.